Hi everyone, my name is Olga Cardamon and I'm the founder and CEO of Eagle Travel Tours to Russia. And those of you who have been following me for a while know that I have been doing a lot of virtual tours lately. And today I'm making this video to answer the number one question that I get at the end of my virtual tours from the guests who have not been to St. Petersburg before. And that question is, how much time does one need uh, to visit St. Petersburg and what are the must-see sites in this beautiful city? So, of course, if you have a lot of time, you can definitely find things to do in St. Petersburg for weeks and weeks. But um, I have to say that based on the experience of my guests, an average amount of time to stay in St. Petersburg is approximately three days. And if that is how much time you have to visit St. Petersburg, I have just the perfect itinerary for you. Let's start with day one. Uh, by that time, you probably are feeling tired. Um, you know, maybe you're jet lagged. Maybe you've just had a long flight. And I highly recommend to keep your first day in St. Petersburg relaxing. Do not go outside of the city. Do not try to visit museums that take a really long time to explore. Instead, try to take it easy on day one. So after you've slept in, go and enjoy breakfast at Cafe Singer that is located in the House of Books building, also known as the Singer building. That cafe is on the second floor and on the first floor in the bookstore, you can grab a book about St. Petersburg and bring it with you to the cafe. You don't have to pay for that book. And one thing that I must say that you should do is get a table right by the window so that you can enjoy the beautiful view of Kazan Cathedral. Order a traditional Russian breakfast, like crepes, for example. Um, browse through your uh, city guide book that you picked up on the first floor. Have some tea or coffee and you're ready to explore the city. First thing that I recommend seeing is some of St. Petersburg's most beautiful cathedrals. Those would be St. Isaac's Cathedral and the Church on Spilled Blood. Uh, both churches are really different from each other and both are really beautiful. St. Isaac's Cathedral was built to be the biggest church in the city and to fit 4,000 people at the same time. So the space inside is huge, decorated with marble and other semi-precious stones, and it's really impressive. Um, the other church, the Church on Spilled Blood, was constructed to be the private church of the royal family and it's decorated with beautiful mosaics inside. Also really beautiful, so I highly recommend going to both. And by that time, the, it might be lunchtime already, so um, if you're ready for lunch, make sure that you are on Nevsky Prospect or Nevsky Avenue, which is the main street on our city. And uh, on Nevsky Avenue, find a place called the Yeliseev store. It's actually a grocery store. It's the fanciest grocery store in our city. It was founded in the early 20th century for these merchant brothers, the Yeliseev brothers. Um, and if you walk around, you can see some really expensive, really fancy groceries, which you don't have to buy there. But they have a wonderful cafe right in the middle. You'll see a giant pineapple there with tables around the pineapple. So if you go there, they have lunch deals. And for about $10, you can have a three course lunch with traditional Russian dishes. So sit down there, enjoy your lunch, and now you are ready to explore more of the city. Uh, the next thing that I recommend doing is visiting the Fabergé Museum, which is located really close to the Yelifseev store. And the Fabergé Museum is a really new museum, yet it is one of the best museums in St. Petersburg. You might have heard of Fabergé eggs before, right? Karl Fabergé was the court jeweler of our last royal family, and every year for Easter, he would make two beautiful eggs for our emperor, decorated with precious stones, enamels, and just 
always really intricate, really well thought through. So the Fabergé Museum has a wonderful collection of those eggs that you can explore. And if you are interested in more works by the Fabergé company, you can also see other things that they did at that museum. So you can spend uh, from 30 minutes up to two hours in that museum. And by that time you might be feeling tired already. So the next thing that I recommend doing is um, going out of the Fabergé Museum and you will see right outside there, there will be a pier. And from that pier, you can take a boat tour uh, and explore the rivers and canals of St. Petersburg. So you can just sit back and relax and enjoy the beautiful views of the city, which a lot of which were designed to be seen from the water. By then you might be tired already and um, you can have dinner at the Georgian restaurant called Cat right close by. Uh, you know, you've had so much Russian food today already. It's time to explore something different. So I hope you enjoyed the Georgian food. By then, you know, it will be time to go to bed. And the next day you can dedicate to exploring the Hermitage Museum. Uh, now I have to mention that the Hermitage is closed on Monday. So make sure you don't plan your visit to there on a Monday. But other than that, there are a lot of amazing things to see in the Hermitage. That all depends on what your tastes are and what you're interested in. My next video is actually going to be about the Hermitage highlights. Uh, but again, you can spend between one and eight hours at the Hermitage. So play, plan your day depending on how much you like art and how much art you can see in one day. But I'd say that you do not want to do much more that day other than seeing the Hermitage. Check out if there are ballet performances that day because seeing the ballet that evening might be a good idea. Finally, your day three in St. Petersburg. I recommend dedicating day three to the suburban residences of our royal family. So there are palaces outside of St. Petersburg that are really beautiful, that were the summer estates of the Romanovs. The two most popular ones are Peterhof and Catherine's Palace. And it depends on how much energy you have, whether you want to see both in one day, which is totally possible, or just see one of them in a more relaxed way. If you have to choose one, I highly recommend going to Peterhof and it's really easy to go there. So you already have been to the Hermitage Museum, right? You went there on day two. So basically go to the same place and right outside of the Hermitage Museum by the water, you will see a pier for hydrofoils. Hydrofoils are high speed boats that take you to Peterhof. It only takes about half an hour. You can get on one of those boats it will take you to Peterhof and you can really dedicate your day to walking around the beautiful park in Peterhof, looking at their gorgeous fountains. There are a lot of little pavilions located in Peterhof uh, that were private homes of the royal family. So you can explore as much of those as you want, or you can go to the Grand Palace there. So you can see how you could easily spend the whole day there. If that is not your plan, then once you get to Peterhof, um, Dedicate your time to exploring the park and seeing the beautiful fountains because that is what, what Peterhof is famous for. And then you can uh, head to Catherine's Palace, which is the other summer estate. The easiest way to do that would be uh, by ordering an Uber. You have Uber in Russia, so definitely make sure that you, the internet on your phone works and take an Uber to Catherine's Palace. Another way to do it, of course, would be to hire a private guide and driver to take you to both suburban palaces. But anyway, Uber is easy enough. You will get to Catherine's Palace and you can explore that estate. Just make sure that you buy tickets beforehand. That can be done again, either through the palace's website or through a company that can provide you with a private tour of those places. Anyway, um, do not go to Catherine's Palace without having a ticket because you might end up standing in line the whole day and actually never getting in. So you can either spend day three relaxing in Peterhof or having a little bit of a more intense itinerary and going to Peterhof and Catherine's Palace. 
Well, <laughs> by that time you might just have had enough sightseeing and definitely you have seen all the must-see sites in St. Petersburg. I hope you enjoyed this three-day itinerary. If you are planning on coming to St. Petersburg sometime soon and have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'd love to give you advice. And um, I hope to see you uh, in my next video where I talk about the highlights of the Hermitage Museum.